Islamic finance is embedded with the opportunity of unlocking economic growth and shared prosperity for nations. Hello and welcome to another interesting edition of the Islamic Finance Weekly, where we discuss and give incisive analysis on Islamic finance and its benefits. One of the interesting innovations in the global finance and capital markets is the adoption of non-interest finance products and portfolio funds. This has supported global market liquidity and Nigeria is not an exception in this regard. On today's program, we will explore Islamic finance and the investment opportunities in the capital market from a recent presentation by Mr. Akin Oyewale, CEO of Mabu Capital Limited. Speaking on the major investment opportunities in the non-interest capital market, Akim Oyewale highlighted the various Islamic finance products and instruments available to investors. Watch the video. So I'm going to speak to the few, uh, very few uh, products that are available in the Islamic um, capital market and that are also uh, products that the Nigerian market actually provide or are seeking to provide, you know, to investors in the in the uh, Islamic capital market. Uh, the most common one are the sukuks. Uh, and the sukuks essentially represents a part ownership in an asset from an Islamic perspective for any investor. As much as possible, Islamic asset management tries to make investors to invest in tangible assets. And like Adese mentioned, if a lot of investment were actually in Islamic capital market, the crisis we had during the GFC, the global financial crisis, would not have been as intense as it was. And as we saw during that period, most of the entities in the Middle East, you know, they actually either came out relatively unscathed or just very few challenges. You know, so Islamic capital market gives you an opportunity to have investments that also allows you, you know, to be sure that your investments are represented by tangible assets most of the time. And the sukuk is a very, very simple or most common way of representing that. It's like the conventional bond, but it does more than the conventional bond in that it is usually either asset backed or asset based. Um, you also have equities. Um, and just like uh, Mr. Abbas said earlier, you know, we have uh, our forebear in the Islamic capital markets in Nigeria, that's Lotus Capital, who actually broke the ground by introducing the Lotus Alal funds, you know, and also the Lotus Islamic Index, you know, that were listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. What that did and what it has done so far is to allow investors in Islamic capital markets in Nigeria to be able to actually uh, um, have investment in Alal compliant stocks. You know, so you have uh, our uh, a lot of Sharia experts that analyze all the stocks in Nigeria, and they've been able to tell us which of these stocks are allow compliance, and that gives us the opportunity to actually uh, invest in only allow compliance equities. And we've seen, you know, over the last ten years, if you just do a regression analysis of the performances of uh, allow stocks with uh, the non-allow stock, that you've actually not lost anything. In actual fact, the allowed stocks have actually performed much better in terms of dividend yield, in terms of actual capital appreciation than the relatively non-allowed stocks. And this is obvious for everyone to see. Um, another aspect of Islamic capital market products that are available, but which few of us are actually taking advantage of, are the commodities. Um, today, even though we have five commodity exchanges in Nigeria, we have two that are quite vibrant of which at the moment you have FX uh, that is the most vibrant at the moment, and you have a lot, of, um, a lot of commodities. Now, by virtue of them being assets, you know, these commodities are usually allowed compliance. You know, though you still need an Islamic expert to help you review this, but you find it very easy and you can go to bed when you invest in some of these commodities. We need investors to be aware that those, those opportunities exist you know, and that they can actually take advantage of that by just investing in some of the um, securities on the FS Commodity Exchange or on the LCFE. You have mutual funds as well. You have Islamic mutual funds. Um, Abbas uh, mentioned earlier that you have uh, commodities, uh, you have mutual funds like the Stambik IBTC, Sharia Compliance Fund, the Sharia Fixed Income Fund. You have the United Capital Sukuk Fund that was just launched. You have the Lotus Fund as well. And you have a couple of private funds as well that, that are Islamic mutual funds. I mean, what mutual funds by their nature is that they allow you to be able to invest a small amount of money, but allows you to have diversified uh, asset classes. So you can invest with 5,000 Naira 
with 10,000 naira and be able to hold assets in about three or four Islamic uh, equities, for example, if it's an Islamic equity mutual fund. Same thing goes for the Islamic fixed income funds as well. With a small amount of money, the fund manager will be able to spread your funds you know, towards a couple of Islamically compliant fixed income securities. You have Islamic unit trusts, which are similar to mutual funds as well, but they could be milestone funds. They could be milestone targets where you can use it to plan for your arch, you can use it to plan for your marriage, you can use it to plan for your next uh, mortgage or um, um, house that you are intending to acquire, you know, or, or buy over time. You know, then you have the exchange traded funds. We do not have any exchange traded fund that is Islamic as yet in Nigeria. Similarly, we do not yet have um, Islamic derivatives. Um, I would hasten to add though that for Islamic derivatives, that is still a bit arguable, you know, but they are coming up in a number of uh, industries and I'm sure Nigeria is just a matter of time before we're able to introduce Islamic derivatives as well. As the cook is one of the major instruments in the fast developing world of Islamic finance, the financial expert believed Sukuk and other Islamic products are not just for Muslims, but for people interested in ethical investments. What we've seen in Nigeria is that we've seen uh, the sub-national Sukuk of Oshun State, you know, that was issued in 2013, that was fully paid last year. Uh, it was, it was oversubscribed. We've seen the three national Sukuks, you know, fully oversubscribed when they were issued, you know, and we've seen that investors are now getting to know that Sukuks are not just for Muslims, you know, so Islamic investments are not just for Muslims, they're for anybody that are interested in ethical Islamic investment. And Sukuks have actually demonstrated that uh, fairly in Nigeria. Um, we've also seen, you know, uh, in the next few years, like I mentioned earlier, Islamic equities, you know, a number of uh, a number of companies as well that are listed on the exchange are also trying to raise funds either as private investment or as public investment that are also Islamic. So you don't see only uh, Islamic uh, sukuks uh, that are public, but we are seeing a couple of private investments as well that are also aligned with uh, Islamic law, the law of the Sharia, the law of the Muhammad as well. And this is giving a lot of opportunities to investors uh, to see to diversify their, their holdings from conventional investment to also Islamic investment. Looking at the SEC outlook for the growth of Nigeria Islamic Capital Master Plan, he acknowledged the target set for 2025 is to expand the frontier of investment for opportunities and options to investors in the market. The Nigerian Capital Market Master Plan has a very ambitious target of having 25% of all the instruments in Nigeria by 2025 to be Islamic. You know, now what does that mean? The objective of the, of, the, of the SEC is to expand the frontiers of investments, to give a lot of opportunities and options to investors in our market. However, if you compare the current uh, volume of sukuks in the market today and what they should be in the next four years, I mean, we still have a long way to go. And that also means a lot of opportunities as well for a number of investors. And for that, we've seen one of the innovative uh, players in the market actually coming out, even though they are a private issuance, you know, to actually take advantage of the uh, desire of Nigerians to actually participate in Islamic capital market. We've seen the first green sukuk in Africa that was just closed, you know, um, um, by a private company. You know, we saw investors actually participating in it, even though it's a digital company. And what they thought, what they are looking forward to is good returns that is also compliant with the rules of the Sharia. And um, we've all seen this, um, this slide that has explained the, uh, the movement, you know, the growth of Islamic finance, Islamic capital markets in Nigeria from 20, 2011 to date. I can say from 2011 to date, a lot has been done by the regulators like the Nigerian Exchange Group and SEC in order to enhance liquidity in the market and ensure that more products are available. What we can only project and what we are seeing from 2021 going forward is that the rise and the development of Islamic capital markets might actually be in a geometric fashion. And for this, we are just expecting investors to please speak more to your fund managers, speak more to the regulators. I mean, there is so much being done by the FMDQ, by the NGX to enhance liquidity in the market, to ensure that most more products are introduced that are allow compliance. 
a lot of capacity building is being done. People should be on the lookout. This session is one of them. And as much as possible, we are expecting investors to continue to ask questions. Please ask questions. You have registered and approved fund managers uh, by the SEC that are available, like Marble Capital. You know, we can speak to you, we can advise you and guide you in how to make your investments in a way that will be allow compliance and contribute towards the growth of the Islamic capital market. At the recent 2021 Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers workshop, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, said the federal government through the Debt Management Office raised 669.12 billion naira through the capital market thought to cook bond offering with the proceeds used to construct and rehabilitate 44 major roads across the country. Another opportunity is in the area of mutual funds, where the United Capital Sukuk Fund, after a year since it was launched, now eats 1.5 billion naira. This showed the value placed by investors on Sharia compliant funds. From the development so far, it is clear that non interest finance has the potential to spur economic activities, boost liquidity in the capital market strengthen corporate governance and serve as an alternative source of funding. The policy environment and regulatory approach must improve constantly and align with the realities of the non-interest finance market. There is also need for the stakeholders to continue in the area of increasing enlightenment on the benefits of the non-interest market to investors and Nigerians as the non-interest finance remains a key vehicle for accelerating economic empowerment and repositioning Nigeria's financial and capital markets. This is to inform our viewers that the Abuja Chamber of Commerce will be hosting its 2021 International Halal Expo in Nigeria between September 14th and 16th. Participants can register via the link displaying on the screen. And that brings us to the end of today's program. Thank you for watching. See you next week Friday. Have a great day.